This is me and my late grandma. She taught me how to read the Quran. But eventually, as I got older, my distance from the Quran kept getting further and further away. Every Ramadan, I promised myself that I'd continue my readings throughout the year. But as soon as Eve came, a few days later, my daily reading would be gone. Until I realized, what's with me 24-7? It was my phone! But I downloaded pretty much every single app related to the Quran. App after app after app. But most were outdated, unreliable and frustrating. Until I decided I'm going to make my own app. $60,000 for an app. What's the going rate for a kidney nowadays? After going through several companies, spending every single penny I had, we got a team from all over the world, bringing together a world-class team to make the best app possible. This is the first prototype. The app that was supposed to take 10 weeks quickly became seven months. Oh my days. Honestly, this is brilliant. Dude, this, this is awesome. The Quranly algorithm is smart. It adjusts itself based on your performance. If you read regularly, it increases your read. It the app tracks verses, pages and time spent reading and the verses to pages function takes you from reading a few verses a day to a few pages a day. This project is for the real enthusiasts. If there's enough of us out there, this will become the future of Quran apps. We'll spend the last seven months developing an app that removes obstacles, sends you unique reminders, tracks your reading and maximizes your connection. If there's enough of us out there, we can get this onto your phones before Ramadan. So please consider supporting us. Oh, and before I forget, sharing this video gets it even further and is free. So please consider sharing. Jazakallah khair. Arnout Danjuma is a Dutch professional footballer who currently plays for championship side AFC Bournemouth and the Netherlands national team. He briefly featured on Freshly Grounded last year and this time we've got him in the studio. Welcome to episode 223 of Freshly Grounded. And welcome to Freshly Grounded, the brand new podcast. Well, it's not exactly brand new anymore, is it? Welcome to Freshly Grounded, the podcast. That's better. Created by best friends, Faisal and Sam. Huh? I, welcome, I said, welcome to Freshly Grounded. After that bit. Created by... After that bit. Best friends, Faisal and Sam. Really? All right, we're live. Uh, on out, Dan Juma. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother. How you doing, bro? Alhamdulillah, can't complain. Jazakallah khair for joining me once again. Well, but yeah. you're going to need to move the mic like way. Closer, yeah. yeah bro, like exactly, this, yeah? Yeah, like that. All right. Um, it's been a year now. I know, bro. Do you know what? It's I, been I, a while. I feel like this is our first episode together, really, because... The first time we did an episode, I, I never like my first episode with someone when I've like only just met them for the first time. That's why I try and do episodes with people after I've known them for a while because I feel like I don't really, I'm not comfortable to like ask too much. I don't really know. <laughs> so now, alhamdulillah, we've known each other for a year. Yeah. I feel like this is gonna be like the first episode, bro. You had a, you had an afro back then, bro. I changed. To be fair, you as well. Um, yeah. I had a big afro. I grew a little beard. It's yeah, nearly, nearly as thick as yours. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> yeah, he's getting there. He's getting I'm getting there. there. Yeah, does yeah, it doesn't yeah. look good. <laughs> yeah, bro. You see it. You see it on the TV. Bro, you know what? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on the beard journey now, but it's like, bro, it's like, the yeah. hair's not growing here and it, 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 this is too big. But when I look to yours, I'm like, mashallah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, actually yeah, a stage yeah, I need yeah. to get to. Bro, it's just, it's <laughs> messy, bro. How long did it take you to grow the beard? Bro, you know what? I started growing a beard really late. Like, um, when I was in university, I didn't have a beard. And it was when I, got, when I hit 19. Before, that's late for bro, 19 Asian. is late bro I'm 24 Asian. yeah and yeah, bro but, that's all I have no but I'm, I'm Asian bro. <laughs> when you're Asian like Asians normally have a beard bro 15 so 19 <laughs> I started growing a bit of hair and it was like it wasn't even joining and in like 2021 20, it started going and then when it rained it pulled yeah. bro it all came at once you know what's matter yeah like there are, there are a lot of friends of mine they don't care about their beard at all and it's them they have the biggest beard bro mm. and me i want it so desperately i'm not getting anything at all it's, it's mess like like the people that actually want to beard it they don't get it and the ones that don't care they, they have all the hair they want wow may allah reward you for your, for uh, your me bro your i need it I need, I need to look like a shave <laughs> <laughs> so why did afro go bro <sighs> to be fair i can't remember um i think it, we went to july or something and it just got bro it just got really hot and i just got tired of it so i just shaved everything off hey you know what yeah um, in FIFA you have afro as well yeah I still have afro on there uh, you know my mom she started complaining this is a true story my mom she looked at me and she's like 
I look good, but I'd rather have you cut your hair again because I think short hair suits you better. And my friends got onto me as well. They're like, bro, cut it off. It's too long. And I, I look, it, it came to a stage where I just, I, I, I was just being stubborn with it. I'm like, no, nah, everyone is telling me to shave it off. I'm keeping it now. Mm. And then just all of a sudden, bro. That's your competitive nature. Yeah, that's a competitive nature. And then I just got tired of it and I just took it off. Bro, talk to me about your mom. Because I, I, I can't remember what we spoke about in the last episode. Uh, although we only had a 30 minute chat. So I'm sure we didn't go deep into anything. But um, your mom and your dad, you speak about them a lot. Yeah. And um, it's amazing to hear. What's your relationship like with your parents? And, and why is it that you speak about them so much? How, how, how much of your success and stuff do you attribute to them? Um, and what's your relationship with them like now? Bro, my relationship, honestly, man, alhamdulillah, um, I really, I can't complain. Um, it's actually funny, you know, because when, when I was a kid, when I was young, you just, you just grow up with your parents and the older I got, the more I uh, respected them. Um, my mom, she had a very uh, tough time um, with raising me uh, because it was difficult for her through uh, the circumstances. Um, so... I think my competitiveness and, and my, my, like my toughness, I, I got it from her. She's a very, very strong, um, strong woman. She's a very, very kind-hearted uh, and caring woman as well. Like, bro, honestly, I could talk, uh, talk an hour about my mom, like, alhamdulillah, and, and through religion as well. Uh, Jenna lays under the feet of your mother as well. So, bro, that's like, I can't really give my mom back what she has given to me. Like I will always owe everything I have to my mom because she is the one that gave birth to me and put me on this earth. Um, and then again, my father, <laughs> I start smiling when I speak about him. It's actually difficult, yeah, a bit now because my, my father lives in Holland um, and I haven't seen him for months because of COVID. Um, and obviously with, this, with the traveling restrictions, it's difficult for me to go back to, to Holland as well. Uh, and my father is actually a bit old, alhamdulillah. He is in his 70s already. Um, bro, he is like my number one fan, and I'm mm. his number one fan. Um, he has seen all my football games. He has, he is, bro, he is, he is my hero. You see what I mean? Like when people look up to, to, to other people, bro. I honestly, I look up to my father. Um, the way he raised me, the way he took care of me. Um, like if I, if I, if I could raise my kids in that way, I know I've raised them in a proper way. You see what I mean? Um, bro, he is nah. He is something else. I can't explain the way he 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 uh, the way he is to me. The way what he means to me. Um, he contributes a lot to my to my to my life in general, man. It's it's uh, it's mad. Has he seen you play live? Have both your parents seen you play live? Uh, yeah, alhamdulillah, they've they've both seen me play live. But yeah, th this is what happened with my father. Yeah, so I think since I've been playing football since since um since I've been four, he has seen every match. I'm not joking. Everyone, he 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 won't miss a single game. Um, but when I made my transfer from Club Rouge to AFC Bournemouth, um, he hasn't seen a game yet. So he, because of COVID, he wasn't allowed to travel to the UK. So he hasn't been into the stadium. He hasn't seen seen a game live of me in England. And it it still, bro, it frustrates him. It angers him so much that that, that he still hasn't seen a game. Um, so it's still a dream of him to come here and watch a game live. And obviously. I don't think it will happen anytime soon with the with the COVID restrictions. So that's still bothering him. So, <clears throat> so for me, it's um, uh, it's very important to to keep uh, speaking to him because he obviously wants to come here, but it's not possible. So I always keep uh, try try to make sure that I maintain the balance of of him not being too frustrated with not watching a game because actually he is more emotionally attached than I am. So it's like sometimes it's yeah. it's it's funny because I'm like I'm not even that bothered about you not watching a game of me live and he's like no i have to see it i need to be there i need to see you live i've seen all your games i haven't been to the uk yet so i just inshallah man inshallah i can make it happen and uh, when the fans are back there the first thing i'm gonna do is get him to the to the stadium and the second thing i'm gonna do is get you to the stadium <laughs> as well. yeah, yeah 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 i see i've never <laughs> been to i've never been to a football match bro you've never been to a football match. you know how crazy that is to me all my all the people that are that are around me like my friends my family everyone has been in a, has has been in a, in 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 a stadium watching me live. So mm. you are there, inshallah, the next time. I promise. I've I've been to I've I've been to Wembley Stadium, but it was for I've been to Wembley Stadium twice, and the first one was because I can't remember I got like 
I, I think one of my friends or someone took me I, for some reason we had some tickets like some like Formula One thing that they did in Wembley Stadium like they turned the football <laughs> was so dead bro <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't dead yeah it was, but, but I could just tell by the, by the by your expression you're yeah, like nah because I'm not into that kind of stuff but it was like the, what was nice was to be in a stadium just to see the atmosphere it was inspiring it was like I saw it and I was like I want to I want to do something in a stadium one day. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So inshallah, for nah, me, that'd be like a come, live event or something. Inshallah, you definitely have to come. So the second time I saw Wembley Stadium was when we went to Wembley Stadium. I viewed it for potentially for it to be the freshly grounded um, venue for freshly grounded live yeah. event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, I just thought like the, my dream would be to, to perform in a big stadium. So why wait? And I just literally, I went for a viewing and um, so... We wouldn't have, so we was like in in talks with Wembley about um, the last live event that we did about doing it there, but it wasn't going to be obviously in the 90,000 people yeah, in the yeah, stadium yeah. bit. There's like a bit yeah. where that's the, the, the stadium is like the balcony and there is like a big room inside which fits like thousands of people. But uh, it's like his own venue and stuff. But so inshallah, one day that actually was in By that time, they were setting up for the Spice Girls. So I was like, there was, you could see like, they was doing the whole Spice Girl set up and then it was just me in the stadium. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was so funny. I boy, stunk of beer though. Stadiums stink. Yeah, yeah. Do yeah. all stadiums stink? <sighs> Maybe I'm fans of that, innit? Bro, you know what? You know what? I've, I've, I've never been to a stadium in the stands myself either, I think, because I've always been playing mm. on the pitch. But when I, when I, when I hear, we hear what my friends say, like, you should, be careful, obviously, where you sit because there are some fans. They are, they spill are, beer on you bro. Stuff. They are proper, like proper into the game. So they will like spill beer somewhere. They will scream. They will shout. So it can it, it, every now and yeah, then it can nasty. be it can become a good, it it, beca it can become a bit uh, uh, a bit hectic. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I suppose unless you're in like the box, but then that, I feel like the box would ruin the fun of being in the game, in it. You're in a room, right? Yeah, yeah. You might as well turn telly. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, you, you definitely need to be in a... You know what, yeah? I think you should be in the environment where it's it's a bit hectic as well because that will give you a proper experience. Yeah. Like, you need to go out of the stadium. Like, your, your shirt should be dirty with, with, with drinks. You should, like, people should throw food on you. Like, you need to have the experience yeah, just, yeah, just yeah, to yeah. go through it. There's actually a funny story. A friend of mine, yeah? Uh, fr a friend of mine, Trezor, uh, Bilal. He came to a game of mine when I played in Belgium at Club Rouge. Um, who was there with him? I think three friends came uh, that day. I think it was Trezor, Ibrahim, and Mehdi. Yeah, I think I think I think it was I think it were, were them. Um, so a friend, so they were watching my game, and it was a fan who threw beer over them. But it kind of seemed like he did it on purpose. So my friend, he turned around, he looked at him. And he got angry in it, so he <laughs> he got upset. So he told him, "It's like, did you do it on purpose?" And the guy started telling him names. He's like, "Oh, you're this, you're that," and obviously he's he's well, black. Like racially, yeah, like re he racially abused him on the spot there. So my friend got he bro, he got angry. So he walked to him, he grabbed his shirt, and he's like, "What did you say? What did you say?" So the um, you know you know the guards is that is that a proper the proper word like yeah, what's yeah, the stewards security. the security yeah, guy yeah. yeah the steward yeah I mean you're gonna know more than me but I've not even been to a match. <laughs> 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 no, no. So they they came they came to the they came to the place where it happened, and they pulled my guy out of the stadium. They pulled my friend out of the stadium, and they let the guy uh, that threw beer of him set into the stadium. Mm. So it's obviously um, I I, did, I just did a recent interview on Sky Sports about um, Black Lives Matter and racial abuse and social injustices, and um, it happens a lot in in the stadiums as well. You know, like it's it's not really pleasant all the time how do you deal with like that from the fans angle like because you see often speaking speaking to you is amazing because i get like a window into the life of what people generally um it's like it's like the other side you never feel like you'll you'll be able to understand the lifestyle of a, prof of a professional footballer right um and Alhamdulillah, through having with you being so open, you're you're really open to like having these conversations, explaining, and you, and you're very down to earth, Allah Mubarak, and we've had so many conversations about it. Um, and I, I, you always see on the TV things like, for example, when you look at like a lot of the kind of racism stuff around football, there's a lot of things on the TV and on and on YouTube of of fans when like a a player is taking a corner. You know, there's stuff like when a player is taking a corner and then they're like making monkey faces at a black yeah, yeah. footballer and stuff like that. 
how does one because i remember speaking to you about this privately and you were saying you've you've experienced that you've yeah, experienced yeah. fans like obviously having screaming racial abuse. how do you deal with that on the pitch knowing that millions are watching around the world and you have to stay composed and just focus on the game what's that like um it's actually weird you know because because i play football at such a young age i got used to it instead of um fighting it all the time if that makes any sense uh like you got racial abuse all the time so you you the first thing you do is you create like a wall like a thick skin just to make sure that, that it doesn't get to you and obviously bro i honestly <clears throat> i got to a stage in my life alhamdulillah why honestly i don't care what people think of me if, if if the opinion is not from a brother of mine um from someone who has good intentions and in the end the only thing that matters is what is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thinks about us so it's like i got to a stage in my life where i honestly don't care what people think about me um but then again i'm pretty much aware of that it's it's not a good thing like it shouldn't be there so it's always good to raise awareness um of it that that is still happening up to up to this day so i think in in on the platform that i've been giving alhamdulillah it's it's always good to speak about racial abuse and social injustices because i'm just creating awareness about it and speaking about the subject inshallah that 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 will make um dunya a better, a better place i mean I've got a little sister, she's 13 as well. Um, You're very protective of her, aren't you? <laughs> I have to be, man. Yeah. I have to be, man. I've uh, noticed. <laughs> um, no, I have to be, man. Uh, so, bro, like, my, my, my thing is, if I can make the world a better place for her to grow up, I've done my thing. That's amazing. Yeah. W what does Ramadan look like? For Dan Juma, let's switch it up. Let's, not, difficult, let's, let's go off a of football. Difficult, it. It? difficult. Yeah, I can't lie. Have difficult. you had to play? Have you had to play games fasting and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, the season will still continue when the Ramadan is there. So okay. what I've done is, um, I've got a chef cook booked in. You're probably hoping for a lot of away games. <laughs> <of them traveling>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. When it's away game, I I, I don't need to fast. Alhamdulillah, yeah. Alhamdulillah, yeah. yeah. Um, now to be fair. It's difficult and easy, I'll tell you why. It's difficult because obviously you can't eat, but then again, it's easy. Um, because actually funny, bro, the, 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 I've, 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 I've done it uh, previously as well. Like during Ramadan, if you're playing games and you're training, I get in such a state of mind um, that I don't get hungry. And the funny thing about this, uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm saying this time and time, time over again, my body gets physically so strong during the Ramadan. It's amazing, subhanAllah. Bro, I'm not even joking. After Ramadan, my body is in the best physical shape it can be. Like, I don't need food to, to train. I don't need water to, to play games. Like, the physical um, improvement I'll make during Ramadan is amazing, alhamdulillah. So, obviously, at the beginning, it's tough because your body needs to get used to playing games and training without, without eating and drinking. But once your body gets used to it, Bro, it's it's the easiest thing that there is, and and obviously the satisfaction that comes with it, just knowing that 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 you're not eating and drinking for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and you're still um, doing what you should do on the pitch, um, it's worth everything, man. Is the whole season gonna be in Ramadan? Is it, when does the season end? This is my first. Uh, this is my first proper season I've I probably ever followed in football because <laughs> we spoke like last yeah. July, yeah, yeah. And then after I, the I said, you know what, this September when this new season starts, I'm gonna follow it, and I followed it, alhamdulillah, all the way through. But when does, yeah. the, when does the season end? Um, to be fair, it depends because obviously if we reach the playoffs, we have, we have got six games more. Um, if we don't reach the playoffs, um, you've got six games left. Um, so it, it depends on, on how we perform now. So when could, when, if you reach the playoffs, when could it end? Uh, to be fair, I need to double check that. Definitely part. past Ramadan. Um, yeah, definitely past Ramadan. Yeah, 100%. Definitely past Ramadan. Mm. Yeah. How, what do you have to do to reach players top five? Yeah. We'll reach there, inshallah. Yeah, inshallah. I mean, we should, man. We should. With the quality of players we have, with the coaching staff, bro, it's like we relegated obviously last year. Um, but it's like it's still up to this day. Like, I think, I think people underestimate what it really does with you if you relegate or if, mm. if, 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 if you go through a tough time um, because of football. Like, we, we really got a big mountain to climb now. Um, but then again, if it's not impossible, I'll always go for it. Um, so we just need to make sure that we reach the playoffs and inshallah, 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 get back to the Premier League. Mm, inshallah. Well, outside of football, what's Ramadan like? Is it like, um, 
what's it like as a family like for you guys? I know your mum's in the country and stuff like that. So um, it will be a very lonely Ramadan for me, bro. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Unless you invite me to your place, I don't bro, think. You're always invited, bro. <laughs> Unless you invite me, I don't. I don't think I've got anywhere else to go. You started uh, me in the career. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be at yours every yeah. day. Uh, no, uh, my mum is in 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 um, in the UK. Alhamdulillah. So I'll probably spend the Ramadan with my mum and with my little sister. Your um, cat. My cat as well. Don't forget my cat, Muazza. Um, Muazza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know is what? Is it I, a boy or a girl? It's a girl. You yeah. know what? Yeah. So when I, when I got my cat and I'm proper into cats, I don't know why. I think because I grew up with them. My father always used to have cats. Um, so when um, when I was looking for a name, my sister, she went. Uh, my little sister, she went online, and she searched something on Google as like Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and cats. And the first thing that came up is that there was a cat that sat on his lap and the cat was called Muazza. Oh really? Yeah. Wow. So I just named her after straight straight away I named her after 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 that cat. Um so yeah, that, that's, that's a good meaning. Yeah, yeah. So it it, it it actually turned into a hype. All my friends got cats now. It's funny. Really? It was mad like all Are my they all cats. No, <laughs> no, nah, nah, but they all they all like a friend of mine, he got a cat uh, called Medina, so we all like try to give the cats a bit names that are in in, in, in the deans. <laughs> um, you know, um, one thing just came to mind. Subhanallah, uh, I've lost it. It was uh, oh, that's frustrating. What was it about Ramadan? No, no, no. It was Anything? about it was it was it was actually something about football. I was I was trying to go off the top of football, but I, rem- I remember something. Oh gosh, I've lost it. Oh, how frustrating! I'm, I'm sure I'll remember it soon. But um, <laughs> you know the the shirt that you gave me the yeah. uh, after the Watford game. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna get it framed and put it here in the here on the wall. Yeah, yeah. on the fishing ground. Nah, that's Inshallah. too much honor, man. No, no, here, no, Inshallah. Because it's signed, I don't want to like. It, it's it's not like I've I've kept it how it is. It's still got your sweat on it <laughs> from the game. But I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put it on. Uh, well, if you give it to me, I can frame it for you, bro. If you want, that's, that's easier. Sweet. I'm sure just in case send it off somewhere and get it sorted. Yeah, but um, oh, bro, I was I, I had a really good question, bro. That was um, oh, it was just so intrig- It was so intriguing. And I completely <laughs> lost it. You're getting upset about it as well. They forgot. Yeah, it. bro, it's the worst when you lose a question. <laughs> oh, How's your Ramadan gonna be then? How does yours look like? That's for sure. Well, um, you'll you'll get back my, to the question anyway. Yeah, my Ramadan, alhamdulillah, bro, it's um. My Ramadan is last year was different because it was the masjid were closed and stuff like that, and so we were doing tarawih at home. Yeah. But I liked last year Ramadan because it allowed me to focus more on like my Ramadan personally and like without there wasn't a lot of social interactions and stuff. Yeah. So it, it just allowed me to like work my relationship with the Quran and stuff like that. So this year will be fairly similar. I think the masjid are open a bit more this year. But I'm looking forward to it, bro. It's it, it's nice. It's like a time to zone out, and I try and automate a lot in Ramadan. Like you would think that with the kind of work that we do in freshly grounded, yeah. that Ramadan's a really busy month for us. Yeah. But we actually try to slow everything down in Ramadan. We just focus on yourself. So I try. I'm gonna try my best yeah. to shoot some episodes in advance where I can. So I, I think I think I think that's like that's that. what Ramadan is for as well, bro. Like. Yeah. 11 months in, into, into, into the calendar, we're so busy with dunya, like the Ramadan, bro, I honestly, I always look forward to it because I know going into the Ramadan, when I get out, when I get out of it, I'm like proper on my deen again, you see what I mean? Mm. It just, it just, it just, it just makes sure, yeah, bro, it just make sure that I, that I let go of dunya again, like you don't, you, you, the only thing you're bothered about, just making sure you satisfy Allah again, uh, getting back on your Quran, make sure you're uh, learning new su- surah again, bro, it's like, Praying more, uh, istighfar, uh, do more istighfar. But it's like, honestly, I always look forward to the Ramadan because it just gets me back uh, properly into my deen. Mm. But I remember the question. The question? Yeah, I remember it. <laughs> do you know bro, what? You know what's what? Bro, I was just in Chief. Bro, like, you look so <laughs> happy when you remember the question. Yeah. Go bro, on. Wait. Um, okay, here's the question. <laughs> you, were, you, were, you weren't even paying attention to what I was no, saying. No, I was, I, was, I, was, I was kind of. Nah, was like, you, you were just <laughs> thinking about remembering the question. Bro, go on. Okay, I've, I've already asked you this question before privately, but yeah. I love the answer so much. I want to ask it to you in public. I want it recorded. The question was um, why do you do the snake celebration after the game? Have you ever mentioned this publicly or do you want to keep it private? Uh, no, 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 no. I think I've mentioned it publicly as well. 
Pop so after it. every game, anyone who's watched any of your games, every game, as soon as you score, you do the snake thing. And I was thinking, who is he calling a snake? Like, <laughs> like, I was like, he must be angry at someone every game. Like, ah, you snake. No, but no, it's no, really no. nice, lovely meaning. Why do you do that? Um, bro, now I need, you know what? Yeah, you put me on the spot there because now I need to make sure I give the same answer as, like, as, as that I gave to you the yeah. other day. Um, no, it's a funny story. Yeah. So when I was young, we always play five a side. Um, wherever bro wherever on artificial grass on, con on on concrete wherever we could play ball we would always play ball with my friends that's a friend of mine uh trezor bilal shema um which is more than a friend of mine bro honestly if i need to speak more about that alhamdulillah bro like i always i always grew up with the same friends and it means so much to me that they're, that they're still with me to this day um so yeah we will we would we'll always play ball wherever we wherever we we went we would always play ball so I would always play five a side. Um, and the friend of mine yeah, that I just mentioned, whenever we were losing, I was, uh, whenever we were, we were losing, I would look to him and I would tell him, bro, look, you know me, I hate losing, switch on. And um, he would look to me and he, because he's such a skinny guy, he's so skinny, we would call him a snake because when, w w once he get the ball and he starts dribbling, bro, he would go past everyone as if he's a snake. So, um, whenever I, I, I looked him in his eye and, I, and I'm like, bro, you need to switch on. He would switch on, bang. Bro, we will always win the games when I when I when when he when he when he got serious. Um, so yeah, just because, bro, I grew up with him um, when we were young. We always play ball. We always go to the masjid together. Um, he is with me till this day. Alhamdulillah, bro. He is the one guy that I know if I if that that I know I will always mirror my life. Uh, with because he will always give me an honor answer an, an, an honest answer uh, he always believed in me when no one else did um so up to, the, up to this day when when alhamdulillah i've made it a bit I'm not there yet but i made it a bit alhamdulillah um like it's just me thanking him on the pitch whenever i score a goal and that's like bro i know you're watching and there's, there's a part of you on the pitch as well yeah the thing i found amazing about your answer when you told me was the fact that you said he when there was times where you couldn't even afford food and yeah. after the game he'd pay he'd buy you food bro, the, and so now you yeah. want to be great like thank him for where you're at yeah now. bro it's, 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 it's like it's not even only him bro if like if i need to mention names uh like ibrahim maybe um trace or like they are the they, those three like they've i've grew up with them when i when i was young when i had nothing what they would give me everything what well, they had nothing as well you see what i mean bro i would i would stay at, the, at their place they'll pay everything for me give me everything that i needed um although they themselves had less so bro yeah alhamdulillah it was one of the reasons why um i got myself into a mentality where i needed to make sure that i that i that i'll make it with, with football because obviously alhamdulillah that's why i succeeded and that's why I'm, I'm best at so just me making sure that i make it with football is my way of repaying them uh, alhamdulillah i mean i can I can help them out now. Um, I can pay stuff for them. Um, bro, I can invite them over to my place. I can invite them to the games. And it's actually, it's, you know what, what's funny? I'm actually not satisfied up to this day what I've done for them because it just feels like I can never repay what they have done for me because they had nothing and they gave me everything and I have everything and I can give them everything. But it's not the same as sharing when you've got nothing. So I can never repay them what they've done for me. But Alhamdulillah, bro, it's like I, I'm, I'm really, really grateful with the friends I have up to, to this day. You know what? I, we, I, we always say on this podcast that we don't script the episodes. We just like turn it on. And even before we, we um, jumped on the mic today, I said to you, is there anything specific that you want to talk about? You were like, no. Nah. And I said, I haven't got anything. We'll just turn the camera on yeah. and just have a chat. And um, I'm really glad we did, bro. And I'm glad we do that generally because you get to see a window into a, into a person just truly how they are with no agenda. Um, they're not coming on, on, on Fresh Lugandi to, to speak about trying to promote something or, or anything yeah. like that. And um, I feel like, and this is me being protective now as your brother. Uh -huh. I feel like when you're on the pitch and after the match and before the match and you're getting interviewed and stuff, because you're so... Um, competitive which you need to be in the, in the level that you play at you have like a, such amazing confidence right like you know i'm there to, to do a job <laughs> and i'm gonna do my very best i'm gonna leave it all out on the pitch and your confidence comes out in your speech and you you explain that you know you know we're gonna do this and all this kind of stuff yeah. and I'm, I'm proud of, of this and that 
And the point is, is that you come across very confident. And it's amazing. You don't come across arrogant, you come across confident. Is it, yeah. But... That's a good thing, though. Yeah, no, no, it's, it, which is a good thing. Yeah. And sometimes some people could even um, confuse confidence for arrogance. Yeah. And that's why yeah, that's, I'm that's so happy problem. that when we're having this conversation and people get to see the real you, because the real you that people are seeing is the real, real you that I know, which is the opposite of, yeah, like, you're not in any way, shape or form, an arrogant person. You have great confidence, <laughs> but, love but we're able to see the opposite. <laughs> and I'm going to say something that it. you're going to hate, bro. But I'm going to say, <laughs> and I know you're not going to be happy with me saying it, but I think that there's a benefit in, for, in it for people. Yeah. And it's that <laughs> when I text you after a match or during a match, you always text me straight after the match. And, and, and what you, and it's so inspiring, bro. Like even last, the, the match just before the last match that you played, you, you, won, man of the, you won man of the match along with Berwick. And after that, you texted me and um, you, all you texted me was a picture of, of, of the Mus'haf, of the Quran. And it's because you were, straight after the match, you went to the mosque and you was reading Quran. And you did that the match before that as well. And you've done that <laughs> so many times. And again, it's not, I don't want you to even like talk about it because I know you're going to be upset with me even mentioning because it's a private conversation. No, that's fine. But... For me, it's so important for the people to know that because, like, people, bro, people idolize footballers. People idolize people who are in the craziest positions. And the fact that you're, like, after, like, scoring a goal, two assists, doing an amazing performance, winning man of the match, and the first thing you decide to do is go to the masjid and your head is in the Quran, and that's, like, a regular thing for you after matches, people should know that and you would never tell people that and so i want to wave your flag <laughs> and i want to be like that's what he does after match and if anybody's listening and they want to be successful in anything like your test some people are tested with not being given things and it's how will they react mm -hmm. but many people are tested with being given something like they might make it to where they want to make it to or they might like win man of the match and it's like how are you going to behave now and um we need to be grateful for for, for, for for how we are and and the fact that you're so humble and you attribute your success to Allah I think is so so inspiring and without you knowing I think there's loads of young people who by hearing that story alone when they reach a certain amount of success they might just go and open up the, the Quran and I think that um, inshallah I, I hope that you get reward for that man for anyone inshallah. who opens up the Quran after that inshallah yeah it's um like I have my protocol um which I always do when I go into a game, um, because it just it just I, I it's it's as as I think I mentioned it to you earlier as well. Um, it's about being grateful, but never being satisfied. Um, but I just feel like if I don't stick to my protocol, I won't have a good feeling in the match. It's like, bro, when I when I when I wake up at night to pray uh, Salat al Fajr, I always pray uh, to rakat more. Um, to ask Allah to help me perform to the best of my capabilities in the game um, and after the game when we're playing um, at home I always go to the masjid after the game um, to pray pray to rakat again uh, read some Quran because I just think that the keep keeping keeping the balance in, in my life is very important um, I don't want to get stuck into just playing football uh, 24 7 because i'm because i'm so competitive um, bro if i if i only focus on football 24 7 i'll turn crazy i'm not even joking bro i'm i'm i won't sleep i'm thinking about the game the whole the whole day when when i play the game i go home, i watch my clips back uh, and I, I analyze the opponent the opponents um so alhamdulillah bro like the dean really gives me peace of mind and and, and rest of heart 100 percent how do you how do you get your rest or like your relaxation time outside of football and outside of religion? What do you do? Like, how can you relax? Um, how do I relax? Well, I, obviously, it's a difficult time now because of COVID. Um, but normally, um, bro, I'm 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 an, I'm an easy guy to be honest. Uh, my friends will come over. Um, I'll laugh at them. Um, you laugh at them. <laughs> 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 that came across so funny. You laugh at them. Yeah, bro. <laughs> like nah, nah. It's it's bro. It's just me. It's it, with me. With, if 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 I'm if I'm not enjoying my football, or my religion, I'm just chilling with my friends. But I'm go. I'm going to visit my sister. I'm helping her out. Um, Are you a foodie? Not really. Really? Nah, not really. Not really. Not really. Are you? Yeah, you seem like I'm one. surprised. Oh, okay, 
You know what? I actually like, know you are. You know when we yeah. went for dinner um, yeah. in London? Yeah. I could tell, bro. You like food properly. No, nah, no. Uh, that, that's not, <laughs> not necessarily yeah, that. Because, because, yeah, because you told me as well, like, oh, bro, I'm, 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 I'm focusing on my diet a bit and blah, 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 blah. Was it? Yeah? I heard that. I'm still, I'm still on that, by the way. You're, sti- you're almost, still on it, yeah? almost a year. MashaAllah, yeah. you're Allah. still on it. Yeah, I managed to maintain my weight, which I'm happy about and stuff. Because last lockdown, bro, I got to 87 kilos. And I was like, bro, what's happening? I was just eating whatever, whenever. And I wasn't training much because the gyms was closed. So this time, after Ramadan in Eid, I said, I'm going to do this thing where six days a week, I don't eat like junk, right? And I give myself yeah. one cheat day a week. And alhamdulillah, I've been able to maintain that all the way to now. So it's been almost, after Ramadan, it's going to be a year since when I, and alhamdulillah, I've maintained, I'm at 81 now. I'm between 80 and 81. See, I, c- I, I, I couldn't imagine how, the f- how, how that must feel like because, because I, I, I'm, always training. I'm always physically active. Mm. But I, I I'll, I'll never gain weight. Mm. So like, bro, I, after a game, I can eat the pizza or anything. Bro, I want. I've I'll seen you. Remember when I picked you up? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing? Remember that time after the game? And you were like shaking. Ah, yeah. When I went into your car. Yeah. Yeah. That was funny. But you had to have like, we, we stopped off at a petrol station and, and you came but back I, into the car with a packet of Haribo, <laughs> a Kinder Bueno, like a Coca, a Lucas A, like chocolate, sweet. It's like a packet of biscuits. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't yeah, realize yeah. how much sugar you nah, eat. You know, what, you know, you know why, why, why that happens? Because I'm not, I'm not, I'm not into sweets that yeah. much. So after a game, bro, like I, I, I need sugar, but I, I'm not even, I'm not exaggerating. I'll pass out. No, I'll no, pass bro, out. of course, because you're like. You can remember yeah, when I was in the car. I was like, bro, bro I'm, I'm need, never ever. I was shaking. You can remember you up ever without <laughs> having a, like a whole confectionery like shot I'll, in I'm my sh- car. I was yeah. like, nah, I need sugar. I need sugar. I'm gonna pass out. That's yeah, funny. But bro, the. I'm not that big on sweets, but I like um, I like biscuits, and I like chocolate, and so I had to main- I had to like control that, and so alhamdulillah, I've been I've been able to maintain that because the exercise thing, like you said, for you you have to exercise; it's part of your job. It's how it's like your lifestyle. With me, exercising is something that I have to force myself to do. You know, I have to, it, I have to you know, you know how mad that, that sounds to me. You know when mm-hmm. I when I, even when I go on holiday, yeah. So this the last holiday I went on uh, with my friends, bro. If I, I I can enjoy my holiday for maybe two days. Maybe the third day, bro, the fourth day, I need to do like a 10K run or something. Really? I need to, bro, I'll lose my head. I need mm. to be active. I can't, I can't, I hate running. <laughs> I hate it, bro. But because, because of that, I had to make sure I was in control of my diet. And alhamdulillah, I've been able to stay at a weight that I'm happy with right now. I'm around like 80, 81. I want to get back down to maybe like 75 eventually. 75? I want to get to 75. Bro, 81 is good, you know. I want to get to 75 lean because I'm a bit, like yeah, but it suits you though. Wait, you uh, want to be like I'm, proper? I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit small, so I'll look stocky if I get to. <laughs> I want to be like lean, seventy five, like you know, muscle, yeah. but but no fat. Mm-hmm. You must be about seventy. I'm gonna guess seventy two. Are you heavy? Probably. Are you tall? How much do you think I weigh? Seventy two. How tall are you? How tall are you? Second guess. I think, but um, I'm. But in, in, in Holland, we calculate in meters, so I'm 180. How much is that? I think it's like five foot 11. Stand up, stand up quick. <sighs> you're, yeah, you're like 5'11". Yeah, you're taller 5'11". Than yeah, you're taller than me. 5'11". So, um, you must be, if you're 5'11", I'm going to say you're like... You're never going to guess it right. I'm going to say you're like... Are you in the 80s? But I'm not giving you any tips. Second guess, come on. <laughs> I want to say like, I was going to say people, 79, people, but I'm going to say- nev- I'm gonna They, go, they I'm gonna never go get there right. I'm going to say 83. <coughs> <laughs> I want to say 79. But I'm going to say, nah, you're, but you're so, not skinny, but you're like, af- af- um, I'm going to go with my gut. I'm going to say 79. Nah, what are you? 83. 83. I yeah. said 83. You said 83. Yeah, but you just said 83 because, mm. because I got onto you. No, I'm 83. Yeah, bro. But that's because like, you're tall. That's because you're tall. I shouldn't be. Uh, even 81, I'm not happy no, with because like, I'm 5'8. I'm, 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 I'm not that tall, but 5'11 isn't that tall, you know? Like people from, from my length, they're normally, was it like 75, 77? How tall is the average goalkeeper? <sighs> but, uh, they must be like. How tall is uh, Azmi? Big good bitch. Bro, he can, he can, yeah, he can, he can reach the, he can, re- he can reach the crossbar with his head, bro. It's like they, they, are, they're always tall. Really? They, they scout goalkeepers mm-hmm. on their length. Mm. But yeah, but yeah, no, no one really gets my, I guess my weight right though. Mm. 
But it's like it's it's because I'm not really that tall, but I've got a lot of muscle. So like, bro, my my quads they are massive. Bro. Yeah, like, no, you can see on the yeah. game. No, I see. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that that time that we went to eat in London though, that was so so I should note that there was a period of time where they um the lockdown restrictions stopped. So it was in that period of time, alhamdulillah, where like you could travel, you could go to restaurants opened up again, they were doing eat out to help out, I think even, um and stuff like that. Uh, we went to a spot but I had heard I had heard of this spot and I wanted to try it out. Uh, and that's yeah. why we went there. But I wouldn't go there again. Not that I, I liked it, but now that we've been there it's you, it, running, you, know I mean? like, you know what? Yeah, I will go there again straight away. Yeah, you you ate a long I bread. I think you <laughs> two, two many meals. <laughs> nah, but you know, you know why, bro? You you've got no idea how blessed you are to live in London, bro. Because I live in Bournemouth, yeah. Um, there there aren't that many halal places to eat. Yeah. So whenever I'm in London, that was nice though. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it is. To be fair, that that Turkish place was nice. But whenever I come to London, bro, it's like a different world. Mm. It's because I can eat everything anywhere. We'll go somewhere today because we'll, we got the cars and stuff. We can go. I think um, everything is closed, no? No, but they do takeaway, so we can we can go somewhere. We got two options. We can either order order here, but there's not much here. Or Bro, we can whatever, take whatever, we can I'll, go for I'll follow drive. you. I'll follow you. Yeah, we'll go for a little drive. You made the right choice the last and time. And then um, eat out. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. But anyway, um, foodie wise, to end that discussion, I am a foodie. Yeah, I like to explore different foods. Well, do you like sushi? Yeah, mm, sushi is good. Yeah, but not the raw sushi though. Do, oh, do you like, well, yeah, nah, bro, you can't eat that. You mm. can't that's eat good. it. That's the best one. That's good. No, <laughs> no. bro, you so know what you're saying is really whenever sushi, people you like, eat, whenever eat, people you like eat chicken and rice basically. <laughs> 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 you like your rice. Nah, nah, you know like chicken. the the prawns, but the ones that are cooked. The plants. Prawns. Oh, prawns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. PR, uh, yeah. You, a prawn katsu curry. You like the prawn katsu? Aha, uh-huh, yeah. yeah. That, that's good. That's, that's very bad. good. That's very but good. But the raw fish, bro, everyone that eats it, I don't know how they eat it. I don't think you're supposed to eat raw fish anyway. It's very tasty. Nah. <laughs> See, this is how I know you're a foodie, bro. You can't, you can't eat raw fish. But apparently, a lot of um, sushi places, they use wine in the rice. Did you know that? Nah, do they, yeah. yeah? I didn't know that either before. So now, I have, and also the soy sauce. Most places, the soy sauce is alcohol. Bro, I, I, yeah. I, n- I, never, I never knew. But guess what I did the other day? Oh, I had bacon for the first time. By accident, obviously. Yeah. But, ah, oh, bro, I felt sick, bro. I ordered the pizza. We had, um, I, had, I ordered a pizza and um, I rang the place and I said, Are you, uh, is your guys' food halal? And they said, yeah. And I ordered the pizza and then it turned out that they have like some halal, some not halal and, and this, this pizza that had chicken, it also had bacon. It was all this palava. Yeah. And I, I took a bite into it. I was like, looking at it, I was, like, I was thinking, That's, that can't be. And they, by the way, they, was, they, they had the worst customer service after. It was horrible. And I, I hate bad customer service. <laughs> Because, bro, if you if, if imagine this year, someone calls you, and even if it was their mistake, yeah, like yeah. even if it was my mistake, the customer has to always be right. So uh-huh. when I called them, I was like, listen, does this pizza have bacon? They was like, yeah. I said, you lot told me your pizzas were halal. They said, yeah, but some are not, some are, you should have checked. And they, but they said to me, they checked. said to me, yeah. you should have checked, you should have written in the notes, this, that, the other, and, and then the manager, and then, and then I was like, look, I, I consider myself quite a reasonable person, bro. I said, I didn't realize I ordered it. I asked you guys if it was halal, but I said, I said, can you just send me another pizza? You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was like, all right, cool. And then the manager took the phone and then the manager goes to me. He goes, listen, we're not sending you another pizza. Nah. Um, if you want, we, you come collect one. I'll give you another pizza. You can collect it. But um, uh, we're not going to send it. And also, because I'm going to have to use my drivers. And also he goes, how am I supposed to know but this is what I was, I was mad offended by. He goes, he goes, how am I supposed to know if you're Muslim or not Muslim? And we're not magicians. Actually, Did he thinking. actually? But he said that. But I was thinking to myself, yeah, customer service, but my, one of my friends owns a restaurant in it, Honestly, he owns this, a place called Zaha Grill, lovely place. I spoke to him after and I said to him, bro, how would you like react in that? How would you be in that situation if someone called you? And I said, if it was me and I own a restaurant, I would think to myself, okay, this guy, because of his religion, he can't eat pork he's eating pork it must be traumatic for him yeah like must like, you for need the first to treat time. them like you need to be like, you know what i would yeah. be like yeah. for the sake of keeping that business i've lived in that area bro like 25 years he's basically he's lost, lost a customer, a customer yeah. who's been living there for 25 years okay i would have been like listen brother apologies even though like it does say it on the menu i can imagine that like mistakes happen 
what we'll do is even though the cost is on us, I'm going to send out a driver up right now. I'm going to hand deliver you like another piece a of, don't one. worry about it. I'm going to make it extra large. Like, don't worry about it. Don't even just, just dash the other. Okay, he said, bring in that pizza and then we'll replace it with like a vegetarian pizza. <laughs> Bro, and I spoke to my friend only, and he said, "Bro, there's nah. been times where we've made a mistake. Oh no, the, even the customers made a mistake. And what he's done is he himself, or he owns a restaurant. He's got, got he's got all of these sides for free, all this kind of stuff. He's put them in his car, and he's driven to the person's house himself, yeah. and he's he redelivered it, and he's apologized, and this and the other. But so I was, oh, that's another topic. But I can't remember what our point was there. <laughs> I hate bad customer service, actually. Man. Nah, I, I, to be fair, I hate bad customer service as well. But but I've never been through something as this, bro. Like. Yeah, why, when why, they say to you, why that, would you handle the situation like that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, to be fair, well done to you, bro. You've, you've, you, 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 <laughs> you can control your anger. But I don't know. Maybe I would lose my head over. Do you know what? I was angry. What's he saying, bro? I was angry. I'm but not I a thought, magician. I was angry, but I thought when I get there, then I'll like express my anger. Yeah. And then what happened is that, alhamdulillah, in not that in, in the time between me getting off the phone and me getting there, there was a there was a lot of time. So it was, a, it was time for me to like relax. Otherwise, I would have just yeah. blurted out. But yeah, man, I don't. Uh, your bad customer service is the It doesn't make sense thing, because yeah. on the back of it, he lost a customer. And he, he lost he, a customer, bro. He might even lose more because you're speaking about it now on the yeah. podcast. <laughs> no one in London is ever going to order pizza, just in case it's that area. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, alhamdulillah, these things are not uh, are not easy, bro. Let me let me do this, bro. I know you played the Freshly Grind card game. I have it myself as I've, well. I've got um, some questions. Here. I'm going to pick some at random. I'm going to ask you some questions, inshallah, before we round up the podcast. We need to do the Ramadan edition as well. Yeah, but that's actually a big secret that's not out yet that you just exposed. <laughs> 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 is it yeah but you know what bro, bro? You, didn't, you didn't tell me that I nah, can it's fine, it's fine it's fine I'm gonna just leave it in that's there on you, we, we, that's we, on you that's on you but I'm not a magician you know <laughs> <laughs> alright here we go asking any random question uh, do you think I am where I want to be in life I'm gonna give you half the cards as well yeah let me ask some questions to you as well so do you think I am where, oh there's a pet there. uh, so come again do you think I am where I want to be in life so do you want me to answer the question like yeah about me about you yeah. that you are where you are in your life nah do you, you don't think that I am where I want to be okay yeah, yeah. nah 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 not where do you think that I want to be you know what inspires me um, about you it's like, bro you, you you can just call, you, you, you like call me on a random day and you're just like Bro, I've got this and that idea. I want to do this. I want to do that. I don't know how, but bro, <laughs> bro, your like your your energy is infectious. But I'm not even joking. Allah my barak, bro. The way you inspire me, and I always tell it to you, always, bro. Oh, bro, you're complimenting me too much. Blah blah blah. And I'm like, no, I'm not exaggerating. Bro, you always come up with so much ideas, and you're so energetic, and you're you're always like one step ahead of me. That's that's nah, honestly, that's that's, bro. That's too. how it feels to me. I'm not exaggerating. Nah, that's not true the way, bro, when you call me on, on like just randomly, you're like, bro, I've got this idea. I don't know how to execute it, but I want to do this. I want to do that. Um, bro, if you, let me, just let me know your thoughts about it. <laughs> 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 now, but bro, honestly, uh, and then it switches me on as well because, bro, I'll just be, I'll just be home on my sofa chilling from, I just came back from a training. I'm like, this guy is always busy with the next step nah, and, I'm, uh, and I'm just You're here watching TV. Bro, nah, 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 bro. It inspires oh, me, man. Oh, mashallah, tabarakallah, bro. Honestly, man. Nah. So, in that like in 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 that way, I don't think you are uh, where you want to be, mm. because you always look um, to better yourself, and you always look for for um, you always look to to improve your life in general, bro. Like I'm you're sure, you're man. such an inspirational person to no, me as well, bro. No, no, no. Alhamdulillah, it's it's Allah my bag, but I'm not I'm not exaggerating. If you you can tell as well because I'm not just saying this. Look, I'm looking into the camera. I'm not just saying this because of the podcast. I always say it to you personally as well. No, 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 no. Um, so I think with you, although you always look ahead of yourself, like you always look into the next step, um, a big quality of yours is that you're such a grateful person as well. So you're not looking into the into the future and being really insecure about it. You look where you want to go. Um, but on the back of it, you'll, you'll, you'll always be grateful where you're at. I appreciate that, man. No, bro. I'm, I'm just being honest. I don't know about that, but I appreciate it. If it would be the opposite, I'll tell you straight. It's the opposite. <laughs> yeah, I, you would. I know. <laughs> All right, go on your turn. All right. Let me just shuffle. Tell me one of your anxieties slash worries, and let's talk it out. 
this this one's interesting though. Mm. I don't really know about any of your anxieties. Or, or I get like a lot of worries. anxieties. Is it? Yeah. yeah. But I feel like an anxiety and a worry is different. Yeah. Like anxiety is... is it's like a level up. Yeah, right? it's a level up. Yeah. yeah. Hamdil, I, I think like um, a year or two ago, I, I, was going, I, I was getting quite a lot of bad anxieties. And I think it was because... I don't know if it was because like I was going through a lot of transitions in my life. I was becoming a dad and stuff like that. And then like... Um, I was like, I was not sure about social media. So I was like deleting my social media and I was coming back because I, I, I couldn't decide if I wanted to have a life where I was sharing things and then I, then I would miss it and stuff like that. But I haven't done now I'm not really going for that. So I suppose I'm not going for any anxieties right now, which is great about that question because yeah, I suppose you can answer it differently at different times. But my worries, um, I think one of my worries is, is that I have a, uh, things that I want to do and implement and I worry that I don't have the um, time and so I really want to grow a team as fast as possible because the things that I have in my head I don't necessarily need to be the person doing them but I feel like I can't grow a team fast enough like we've grown a bit of a team in Fresh Grand now we have someone who takes care of editing and, 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 and stuff like that and so I don't have to worry about any of that we have someone who takes care of like the game and, and the yeah. shop in general but like I have more things that I, w I want to like distribute to people, but we don't, we're not going a team fast. I mean, maybe that's like one of my worries that I don't want to fall behind because I feel like I don't have the assets. And as I'm becoming more, as I'm becoming older, I've also realized that I have less time because A, I want to put more time into like my children and stuff, but also because I, um, I realized that my, perhaps my asset with Fresh New Grounded is perhaps not, or with anything I do is maybe it's not, the doing the thing maybe now it's like orchestrating the thing like getting someone like you on the podcast i i can't i can't um i can't give that i can't distribute that job to somebody else because i have a personal relationship yeah. with you not yeah. that person yeah. Yeah. and yeah. so that's like my job would be to like build great relationships and, and and that kind of stuff um and so i like doing that i like networking i like um those things so i don't know i i guess that's an answer but I don't know if that's a good enough answer. But I want to actually, um, I want to throw that one, that one back to you. Um, what is one of your anxieties and worries? Um, that's a difficult one for me. Um, you know what my biggest worry is? Um, that that I'll always go through um, is I'll always question um, my sincerity. Um, obviously, because you're a professional footballer and um, you're on a certain platform, you're on, you're being on TV, um, you're being watched by a lot of people. Um, Alhamdulillah, you 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 like you know I drive a G wagon, for example, yeah. So. Sometimes I'm on this. This is me being honest. Sometimes I'm driving in my G wagon, and this is a fact. I nearly sold my car a couple of months ago um, because I just feel like, for example, me driving a G wagon, and then on the and on the back of it, I look to uh, my friends or my family or anyone else, and they are driving a smaller car. Just small stuff like that, and then I always doubt my sincerity. I'm like. Am I becoming arrogant because I'm driving a bigger car than than I should? Or um, when I buy something new, I'm, I'm always questioning my sincerity. Um, like, do I do I actually buy it because I want it, or am I buying it because of um, because I know I'm being watched, or because um, I know it's what a footballer should do, for example? So I always that that's a it's 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 a big worry of mine that that I always make sure that I humble myself just to make sure that I don't become arrogant. That's amazing, man. I don't, I don't think you should lose that. I don't think that's a bad thing that you question that. There was, there's so many like, scholars, as we, you know, that would like say that um, they always question their intention. That's the hardest thing to, hard, the hardest thing for them to like get over was like understanding their sincerity. And the fact that you're thinking that is amazing sign in itself. And I know you know that. Um, and even like you, it, your Instagram, your social media, bro, you, you don't, you're not like mad extravagant on, on it. 
You could if you nah. wanted to, but you're like a lot of the stuff is football related, and you just share what you want to share, and that's what's beautiful. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm very, very aware of what I actually share, um, and I think privacy is key as well. Mm. Um, I wouldn't like the whole world to actually have a look into my house or a, look in, a, a proper look into the way I live. Um, as long as, as I can inspire people, um, help the youth, um, and there are so many kids that look up to me, and as long as I can, I can be a good example to them, bro, alhamdulillah, they'll that, always, that always bring um, contentment in my heart, always. That's an amazing answer, bro. Uh, we'll do a couple more, it's my turn. In the past year, what was the moment in which you felt closest to Allah? In the past year? Um, closest. Nah, that's an easy one. In the past year, if you would say the past year, I'm, I'm not sure if, it, if, it's, it's, if it's a year ago already, but I would say especially because we're going into the Ramadan now, bro, the, the last Ramadan was the closest I felt to Allah. And mm. I'll always feel the closest to Allah during Ramadan. And um, that's why, as I said earlier, I'm really looking forward to Ramadan because it always gets me back um, on the deen properly. Um, yeah, bro, it's just, it's, 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 you know what? Yeah, it's actually, it's, it's not, I, I'm, I'm not sure if, it, if that's a good thing as well. Um, obviously, Ramadan is always there to, to, to get yourself back into the way of living um, in the way you should live. Um, but yeah, Ramadan should be, should, be, should, be, should be there for you to lay a firm ground and build upon it mm. um, for the rest of the year. And I always feel like in the Ramadan, I can be, I'm, I'm the best version of what I can be. And then the, the longer I go away from Ramadan, so the more time goes on like the less I'll be on my deen. So I think it's it's really good for me this Ramadan to make sure that I need all, all the new stuff that I'm learning myself, um, all the istighfar that I'm doing, all the uh, uh, sunnah that I'm doing, everything extra that I'm doing, I should make sure that I stick, t stick to it and mm. continue doing it for the rest of the, of the, of the year. Yeah, that's, uh, that's powerful, man. With Ramadan, the, um, the amazing thing is as well is that have you done a Ramadan while you've been in, in season before, by the way? Yeah, yeah, loads. Because last season you was injured, right, during Ramadan? Or was you playing? Yeah, yeah, I think... I th do you I think th that had something to do with being close, like feeling... No, no, I was playing, I was playing. Oh, was I was you? playing, yeah. Bro, I've, I've, I've been into professional football since I'm 18. And I've always fasted during the season, so wow. it's nothing new to me. Um, that's why I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, bro, I'm not guessing, I'm speaking out of experience when I'm saying... During the Ramadan, I'll always perform to the best of my capabilities. Like, obviously, as a Muslim, like, um, it's very good for your soul. But, bro, the, like, you should actually, I, I read into the physical, um, the physical benefits of it as well. Bro, like, the physical benefits of just fasting, they are amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are amazing, and especially for, for an athlete. Yeah, I've heard that as well. Yeah. Nah, it's good for me to go to Ramadan again, man. Fine. Let's do uh, one last question and we'll round up the podcast. Nah, this one's boring. <laughs> <laughs> is it about you? Nah, nah, it's about you. So this is the last question. I need to have a proper one. Yeah, and it needs to be about you. Nah, how can I help? Nah, 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 nah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll go for this one. When I think of meeting Allah... I feel Yeah I think I'll answer this one for I guess I feel um, Before I answer, Before when I answered it I said I feel scared But I think the great thing About these questions Like I said Is that you can answer them With how you feel at the time And right now I feel like I guess I feel Hopeful Excited In, in some ways um, Because Because Allah is As he describes himself Which is the most loving, the most forgiving, um, yeah. you know, our protecting friend, our protector, uh, the provider. And so why would you not be excited to meet the one who loves you more than your own mother? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it's like the Akhirah is kind of our home, isn't it? So 
I guess at this point, maybe I feel excited. But ask me another one that's to do with you. Because <laughs> this, this is Dan Juma on the podcast. No, nah, no, nah, it's me. good, bro. It's, so good, it's good. I want to answer one about it's you. Because some of those are like... You as well. Yeah. It has to be about you. <sighs> one of Allah's names. No, this is about me again. You have to give one about you. Is the sub <laughs> <laughs> It has to be like something about you. Uh, but why does it need to be about, bro? You know, I, I actually I draw the same card. Yeah, because yeah, uh, there's like a mixed up pack that is. Yeah. What motivates you to get out of bed every morning? Was that good enough? It's not good enough. <laughs> it's like, you know one of the ones that I like? Search, um, search a card. One of the ones that ask I like. Me, ask me anything. I promise to be vulnerable. Nope. Yeah, that, like that. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here go. Ask me anything. Uh, I promise to be vulnerable. Subhanallah. So now you promise to be vulnerable. So let's see. <laughs> uh, okay. Bro, you were just waiting for that card. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow. My question to you, and you promised to be vulnerable, is? I, I didn't. Did I? You did. I've got a juicy one, but I feel like it's. I feel like it's not going to make the cut for the episode if I ask it. <laughs> you did promise to be vulnerable, so. Um, okay, I'll ask you a question. Um, what are you? Um, okay, I'll just ask it straight, in and you can just answer it in depth mm -hmm. if you want to. Are you excited about? Because you're young, right? You're 23 right now. 24 now. Getting old, bro. That's not old. I'm you're not 24. joking. I thought old. Man. 24. You're 24. In, let me guess. January. Uh, it's still a lot of part of January. I'm going to say 31st. Yeah. Well, I know you're too old. Hey. <laughs> um, okay. Are, are you excited about um, having children? Yes. And what are you excited about? About that kind of... Yes. yes. You, know, of you know what? Yeah. And actually when... Um, I think even today, um, because I, I, I came 15 minutes too late um, and I texted you, I saw your profile picture, you have a profile picture of your uh, your son, Zakaria, okay, yeah. mashallah. Um, but whenever I just look to, especially you as well, um, having a kid and certain friends of mine that have children, bro, I'm really looking forward to having children. I think, I think it's one of the blessings in life that you can't guess about. You need to experience it. And um, it's actually funny because um, I had a discussion with my mother uh, yesterday about it uh, because my mom, she will literally, she will call me six, seven, 20 times a day. And she will literally ask me the same questions over and over. And I'll be like, mom, didn't you just ask me the same question like five minutes ago? It's like, yeah, but I just miss you. I want to hear your voice. I want to speak to you. And she always tells me, she said, that's a mother's feeling um, towards that child. And she always tells me, you will never understand how that feeling is. Wow. And I always just think she's exaggerating. So don't, sorry, mom. Um, but um, she always she always tells me that's a modest feeling towards that that child, and you will never understand it unless you've 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 experienced it. So I'm just I'm really looking forward to to children, inshallah. But on the back of it, um, bro, you need to have a pious wife as well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually my first question. So I, so I, <laughs> that so, was the question yeah, you want to hear. That was the first one. So I, I, I put it out. So maybe you deserve. Um, yeah, may Allah give you a, 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 a pious, healthy uh, um, mean. children and a pious, healthy spice. Uh, mean. Uh, mean. Uh, spice? Spice. Spouse. <laughs> I <meant> said spice. <laughs> a spouse. <laughs> a spouse. You know what? That's going to sound like I was actually meant that, but I was trying to say <laughs> spouse. And now it sounds like I was trying to say spice. Sp That's a spice. That's an awkward one that I'm going to keep in the episode, but I'm going to be called out for his, uh, <laughs> his, his spice. Um, bro, thank you so much for jumping on the podcast. I really appreciate it. I, I appreciate Anytime. your openness, man. Like, um, uh, you, you, you don't owe us anything and you're always so happy and open to being on this thing. And um, I know with the world that you're in, um, you know, a lot of people are skeptical about uh, being so open and, 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 and just having like a, a chilled out chat. And I appreciate that you're anytime, one of the rare anytime, people brother. that is always up for it and, and no questions asked. So no, I really no, appreciate I your vulnerability, it. man. Nah, it's an honor to be here as always, bro. We'll really. catch you. Barakallah, Fik. Inshallah, we'll have you back on the podcast me. soon. Inshallah, inshallah, anytime. Maybe inshallah before the uh, before the World Cup. Inshallah, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah.